here um, uh, with another episode of a bit of data science and scikit-learn where we do just a little bit of data science and a whole lot of scikit-learn. Um, we're going to go over into what I think is kind of like a fun part. Uh, and this is just hyperparameter tuning. Uh, you've already settled on a, a model architecture. Um, you're going to be using like um, you know, PCA in the beginning, and then you're going to be doing some like feature selection based on like linear regression, and you're finally going to be taking that and pumping it into a um, support vector machine using a, a you know Gaussian kernel or something like that. Um, so you already determined what your model architecture is going to be, and now you just want to figure out you know what are, what are the hyperparameters do I want? Do I want to reduce my dimensions down to two or three? Do I want to use L1 regularization with a high penalty or a low penalty? Um, and there's two things that you can do, uh, grid search and random search. And really the cool part about this is that even with TensorFlow, you, you can use grid search and random search. These, these tools have just been so useful that other libraries have made scikit wrappers that make their stuff easily usable with them. So, um, so let's go ahead. Um, so with grid search, what you basically want to do is you, you'll do cross-validation again. So you want to figure out you're testing which model is better. So we use cross-validation. And we've got a, and we, and we search and you, uh, over a lot of different parameters for these models in order to figure out which one's the best model. Uh, grid search exhaustively searches for every single combination. So right here I've got um, one, two, three, four plus one, two, three, four times two, so 12. So I'll do 12 searches. Um, so you exhaustively search all the stuff. Your param grid looks like this. Um, it's a list of dictionaries. And you'll search through all of the combinations within these dictionaries. Um, so um, I can just show you what grid search looks like, the, the API. It's not that complex. Um, it will take an estimator and it will take a param grid. That's about it. Um, you can also take a scoring function, so um, you, can, you can try to figure out like which scoring function would work best for you, whether it's like F1 macro or you know ROC, uh, AUC macro, or something like that. Um, you've got fit params as well, so fit params are parameters to pass the fit method, uh, so sometimes you'll need that. You've got the number of jobs and stuff like that. You, of course, have the param grid, and I've just shown you what the param grid looks like. This is, this is exactly what a param grid will look like. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do this. Um, I'm going to load the digits data set, um, which is basically like a smaller version of MNIST. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, train test split, because you always want to train test split. The tuning parameters I've listed right here. I'm going to grid search over uh, support vector classifiers, uh, to find my favorite thing, and then I'm gonna gonna show it off. So we fit. It takes a while. We're searching over lots of stuff. You know, one, two, three, four, uh, twelve different types of um, different grids of stuff. Um, and in the end, it spits us back what the best parameters are. It looks like C being ten, gamma being whatever, and the kernel being RBF, which is unsurprising. Gave us the best results um, based on F1 macro. Okay. Um, you can actually just look at all of these results right here. There's a ton of stuff. Um, I urge you to, to look at these. Um, you know, something else that you can do is just do um, CLF uh, dot, uh, uh, what was it called? Um, uh, CV results uh, dot keys. Uh, this can give you like a good sense of what's in there. There's a lot of stuff. But for example, um, the uh, uh, yeah, so I can give you a lot of stuff. The, the cool part about this is this CLF. Uh, so it did grid search and it returns a model. It actually returns a model where it returns your best model. I um, mean, you can use this best model to do lots of stuff. So we can use it to go ahead and predict. So we've got this predict stuff, and you can throw it into a classification report, you know, to see your precision recall F1 score. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, one thing that I always like to do, and I, I almost wish this was just sort of a built-in function, is just go ahead and print the params as well as the uh, results for those params. Um, so we can see, you know, what, what's, the, what's the worst one here? Yeah, it looks like RBF with a gamma of 0.0001 with a C of 1. Uh, got really, really poor results. 
So the second thing that you can do is you can do randomized search. Um, it's the exact same thing except for, well, so it's a great paper. I think it's by Bingeo. Um, uh, and it basically says like, hey, you know, we've been doing grid search for a really long time, but randomized search is actually better. Um, and there's some reasons for this. And one of the reasons for this is it generally means in, in high dimensional hyperparameter tuning spaces, generally one or two dimensions are gonna be the important dimensions. And so randomized searches are, are better able to optimize in those conditions. Um, <clears throat> and so the param grid will be the exact same. It will be a list of dictionaries or just a dictionary, except for each parameter you can specify as a list right? In which case we'll just uniformly choose between them. So class weight, balanced, none. Or it will, uh, you can specify an actual distribution. So like an exponential dis distribution. So which is kind of cool. Uh, randomized search looks the exact same. Uh, estimator, param dictionary, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we can go ahead and just do the exact same thing. Uh, this is the exact same fit. Um, right. So it takes a while, as, as one would imagine. I think the initial randomized search does, um, here it is, I guess we can sort of see cache size, see, well, I mean, let's, let's, let's check this out. Uh, we had 10 iterations, so we did, we did 10 trains. Um, we can check out the best parameters, um, high C, balanced, uh, gamma, uh, somewhat low, nice RBF, you can check out all the results, right? Uh, again, pretty long. Um, we can check out what the uh, uh, the uh, classification report is. You know, it looks like this one didn't do so well. We only uh, searched over ten. You know, perhaps selecting C as an exponential uh, wasn't wasn't the smartest idea. Um, we can go ahead and print these stuff out. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of bad results. We had a single good result. It's like somewhat sad. Um, okay, so. Um, that's that's it. That's it. It's fun. It's it's like you're already done at this point. You know, you're just already done. You're just like, hey, machine, just do some work for me. I love hyperparameter tuning. Um, the one thing I'd like to say is, don't forget, anytime you're using a, an estimator that is ends with CV, it's already doing this for you. Um, so you're already selecting the best stuff. So don't put one of those in, inside of this. That that's just it just clogs the machinery. Um, Okay, I, I hope you enjoy and I hope to see you back next time.